After we return with the gear, I bite the bullet. I'm going to fix this. I have to. If I don't start thinking for myself, I'll go mad. I tap Monica on the shoulder, interrupting her paperwork. Can, uh, can we talk? She smiles warmly at me, giving me a nod. Absolutely, I'm saying what's on your mind. But no, I mean, not here. She looks around the club room for a second, probably weighing up the things on her mind. Sure, come with me. Standing, Monica gives the club members a wave. Say, Ari, would you mind taking charge of, or charge of packing up? I'd do it myself, but... We'll handle it, Monica. The girl throws me a knowing look as I offer a small nod. Yuri does the same, a smile crossing her features. Monica stacks her papers into a neat pile and places them into a filing cabinet, before turning to face me. Shall we? Offering her a nod, she steps out of the room with me following in tow. This should do. After leading me to the far end of the building, she steps into one of the music rooms. These are built to dampen sound, so it should be enough to keep our conversation private. She sighs as she sits up on a piano stool. This is about reconnecting with Sailor, yes? It is, but it's also not. I'll let you find the words and start from the beginning. She gestures for me to start when I'm ready. It only takes me a moment to find the words. I'm lost. I feel so... Two weeks ago, I didn't have to worry about friends or relationships or talking with people or... I just... I don't know what to do. Slow down. What is it that's getting to you? Everything. And yet, I feel so stupid. I know what I have to do. I've known for a long time, but how do I... Why do I... Monica says nothing, simply waiting patiently. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. I don't know what to do, and I've been so lost for so long that it's hard for me to really grapple with anything anymore. I'm supposed to be an adult, supposed to be able to take care of myself and feed myself and clothe myself and pay my bills and... So why is this so hard? What do I do? I'm afraid I might need a little more context than that, but it sounds to me like you're struggling with some personal matters. If not, or forever, Monica, out of anyone, you're the one who can step back and see things for what they are. If you're after her advice, I'm not quite sure what to start with without knowing the who or what. Sayori. I, I'm in love with Sayori. Monica blinks at me, stupefied for a brief moment. I, well, that's... She looks to the wall, then to the piano to her side. For how long? Since we were about twelve. At least, that's when I realized. Right. You know, normally when people say these kinds of things, they say it's a friend or something. Monica, please. She meets my gaze once more. But then you're serious. I, well, I don't know if she reciprocates, but there's a chance that... Her words drift off, the room deadening the sound before they properly reach my ears. I can't assure you of anything. That's not what I... Look, look, look I just want some advice. I am seeing this isn't really my field of expertise. In her motion to brush me aside, she accidentally locks eyes with me again. This is bothering you, isn't it? Not just a little. I wouldn't be here otherwise. Then I'll do my best. I appreciate it. We both take a moment to breathe. Where do I start? How about the most recent development rather than the beginning? So that we can then work backward, all right. She nods, clicking her tongue. Indeed. Sayori, she's been my best friend for longer than I can remember. The end, not the beginning, MC. Oh, right, right, sorry. Seems I defaulted to the start of the story. She doesn't seem to want to be around me at the moment. Or, to be more specific, I don't know if I want to be around her. Did you have a fight? No, 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 no. I just... I don't know how to act. You don't know where you stand? Yes, that's exactly it. I see. Unfortunately, I'm a touch inexperienced with this. But I know someone who is better with advice than I'll ever be. Unfortunately, I believe she's in the middle of an exam right now. Okay. Monica shrugs, shaking her head. Guess it's up to me, then. Um, see, you've been hard at work with your studies, right? Of course, you don't keep rank 4 without the legwork. And how 
much of this study has revolved around interacting with your peers? None. So, yeah, that's, that's the problem, truthfully. I'm just not confident in my ability to be a teenager. The only person my age before I joined the club that I interacted with was Amelia. And she's not exactly winning any awards for being well-adjusted. Amelia, sorry, I don't believe I'm familiar. She's in Ika Natsuki's classes, other than chemistry. Blonde hair, president of the Going Home Club. Monica shakes her head. No, sorry. That's fine, it's not really relevant anyway. Just know that my circle is small and insular. And now I'm faced with the prospect of joining in activities that are much bigger than I am, and... I'm scared. It's not just the culture festival. No, I'm not opposed to public speaking when it boils down to it. I just... It's the getting to know people part that trips me up. She grins, standing up. So that's what you really wanted my help for? Yeah, I'm just scared that if I do something stupid, she'll... Well, we'll go back to the way we were. I understand now, MC. You're not alone, right? Er, all right. Whenever you feel isolated and alone, that's just the demons in your mind. The other club members want to support you, yes? I take it they've told you then. Everyone's not worried about you, MC, but I see that there's no need. You sought out help, and that means you're all ready to start being more active in your own destiny. That's my hope. All I really needed was someone to help me coalesce my thoughts. Happy to help. I don't know what I'd do without you. Remember, MC, the club is more than just a daily gathering. We're a family. I'll not forget it. She walks past me, her white ribbon wafting behind her as she moves to the door. Coming. If we stay much longer, let's get my catches on one of those, or her patrols. Give us attention. Hold on. My catches on one of her patrols and give us eight attention. There we go. Detention with you? Oh, the calamity. She chuckles as she slides open the door. It certainly would be, spending all that time locked in a room with my, or one of my club members. Not unlike a certain club time. Not unlike a certain club time. I can't contain a giggle as we vacate the room. Seems I was right to change my stance. I needed to be more clear, and before anything else, I need to sit down and talk with Sayori about all this. Before we decide anything, we need to have that conversation. Shaking my head, I finally managed to trudge through the front door. That was a long day, if I'm honest. Too long. After what happened with everyone today, I'm honestly glad I was able to talk it out with Monica rather than getting yelled again, or yelled at again. But Sayori, I didn't say a single word to her. Not a one. On the entire trip home, not even a greeting or goodbye. Not that I didn't want to, mind you. I just... After what Natsuki had said to me, I just couldn't find the right way to start. I'm going to think carefully about what words to say while I take a shower. Where that conversation starts. Then I'll let Sayori decide. Until then, I'm not going to assume anything. After my long, probably too long shower, I remember that I have work tomorrow. After that sobering thought, I start to throw together something for dinner. It may still be really early for it, but honestly, I'm just keen for this day to end, even if it means I need to work sooner. And if I make a large enough meal, I can have it for dinner before the sleepover tomorrow as well. Oh yeah, see so or sleepover tomorrow. I should probably do something about that. Hell, is there anything I can do, other than talk it out with Sayori? I don't think I would be able to go that long without letting everyone in on their some... Or, I don't think we'd be able to go that long without letting everyone in on there being something going on with us. Okay, no, that, yeah, it, okay. In on there being something going on. It was just a, okay, it's fine. So best to resolve it sooner. Damn it. That does mean, though, that I can't just go to bed tonight. Now is the only time I have left between now and then. As I start throwing some vegetables together, preparing to blend a stew, I feel my pocket vibrate. Curious, I place the veggies into the pot and pull out my phone. There's a text message there. We need to talk. After finishing dinner, I place myself on the floor, legs crossed. It's an old technique my father taught me before he left, something I used to fend off stress. I still haven't found exactly what I want to say, but I think I'm starting to find it. An old form of meditation. 
Sierra will be around sometime after she finishes her own dinner, and there's no way I'll be able to do anything else but worry until then. The carefree Sierra had been so serious in our short talk over the phone earlier. It's time I face her head on and talk this out. But with no other way to kill my time, I simply wait. I feel my breathing slow, and my heart rate dip along with it. I don't think you need to hyphenate heart rate. Like a turbulent hurricane, my fur er, my emotions watch over me, barraging them, er, barraging me with all of that which had tormented me for so long. Flinching with each wave, my heart is assailed with the pain I've inflicted on myself every day, not being able to see Sierra but through a window. My previously open palms clenched into fists as I relived the day that started it all. And slowly, every day since. Even the light at the end of the tunnel, being reunited with her, is met with a sour bite. I've done something but wa or done nothing but wallow in my own shame since. Even with her support, it's been too much for my weak soul to handle. I feel myself washed over or, I cannot read the day, man. I feel myself washed away with the torrent of wind, buffeted by every last chance I had to talk to her over the past three years. Every opportunity to make it right. And all at once the tempest halts. All the pain vanishes in an instant. I feel warmth unlike anything I'd known. It feels like... Sayori. Slowly I feel myself return to my body, and with it my senses with haste. There's a wetness on my shoulder. I smell a cool, soft air of roses. I feel a slight constriction around my arms and softness upon my cheek. Opening my eyes, I see her. As she sobs into my shoulder, the ribbon in her hair shines like the light glinting at the end of the far-off tunnel. After an eternity in each other's arms, Sayori finally pulls away and we get up off of the floor. Her eyes are red from the sobbing, and I can't help but wipe the remaining tears from her face. In the softest voice I can muster, I bring my hand to her cheek. Hey, no need to cry, alright? I'm right here. Through her the sniffles, she responds. You weren't. You weren't when I needed you most. You loved me, Melody. You abandoned me just like my own family. Just like yours. Well, well you abandoned the club too. So that's what this was all about. I really am a monster. After all this time, I couldn't even see that I'd hurt her so badly. I'd caused all this pain for her, and I'd been too busy with my own to see it. Well, no, it's more like... <laughs> You thought you hurt her, but not in the way you did hurt her, and it's whatever. I don't deserve her, but here I am. I don't think I'll ever be good enough for her. But Natsuki believes in me. Sayori, I'm so, so sorry. Words cannot do justice to just how sorry I am. This, everything, is all my fault. Sayori pulls away from me. But did you think that I wanted an apology? Some hollow promise that it won't happen again. You left me! You let me rot for five years, Mel! I should be mad at you! I should be furious! She sighs more at herself than at me. But I'm not. I never was. I never could be. Oh, I am, Mel, you scared. Scared that you'll do it again. Scared that I'll lose you. I can't go through that again. Please don't make me go through that again! A tear is well in her eyes once again. I, I won't. I'd already made my decision. I hadn't thought about it that way before, but honestly, I'd made my decision long ago. I'm sorry, Sayori. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I know I haven't been the best friend to you. But please, let me make it up to you. Again, with the empty promises. How oh, I know you aren't just going to run off with Dotsky or Monica or Yuri. Why would I do that? She really doesn't trust me. I just wish it wasn't all warranted. Because I'm just... me. I can't bear to see her crying anymore. It's barely a moment after our eyes meet that our lips follow suit. Words? Those can be faked. We both know that. If I want her to never doubt, my er, doubt herself again, I needed to convey that. It doesn't take long for our heart to heart to devolve into this. I lose myself to her, my fingers disappearing into the softness of her hair. My arms wrapped around her, wishing never to let go. Sari's breathing is labored, hot and heavy. 
Her shirt has slipped down to one side, exposing a large portion of her arm. I reach to place it back, but she instead takes my hand. Oh, father, with that. Something in the way she speaks, oozing with a soft yet sweet tone, causes me to almost recoil. Is this really Sayori? My sweet, bashful childhood friend? Taking my hand, she gently walks up the stairs. I follow, allowing the conflicted feelings to well within me before stuffing them out. Stuffing them out? Arriving outside my door, she looks deep into my eyes. You'll... you'll stay with me, right? And no matter what happens, you'll trust me, right? I look her in the eye. I will. I don't know what makes me scoop Sayori up into my arms and carry her across the threshold of my room doorway. Hey! <laughs> What's this all about? Perhaps I'm trying to relieve the tension that's hung so cloyingly over the entire day like a toxic miasma. Don't you remember? You always used to enjoy it so much whenever I picked you up and carried you. Over storm drains, puddles, those spots of imaginary lava on the floor. And judging from that excited giggle, I think you still do. Hi. I have the right to remain silent. It feels so much like old times, which I've always remembered. It makes me happy you do, too. And yet tonight, it's somehow also enjoyable in a different sort of way. Well, perhaps I'm doing so in recognition of what this moment signifies. The moment when seven years worth of indecision, fumbling, hamming, and hawing, or hemming and hawing, at long last melt away. Replaced by both clarity of thought and purposefulness of action. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The thing is, I don't know if this is a Britishism, but my familiarity with this phrasing is like humming and hawing, and that's like when you're not sure what you're saying, you're like, mm, 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 mm. that's humming and hawing. But, but did they put hemming? And I don't, I don't even, I don't even know that. I don't, I don't even know. The long-awaited consummation of an intimate bond lasting well over a decade. A moment almost akin to a wedding night. Whatever my, or whatever my true motivation might be, the giddy light in Siri's eyes, which shine like two sapphires in the dark, it makes that sudden move of mine completely worth it. I'll show you just how enjoyable things can get. Allie, you.